All right, welcome. Um, my name is Doug Faist. I am Director of Enterprise Architecture at Discover Financial Services. Um, we're going to talk about how we're transforming how we deliver software uh, in Discover and why it's, why it's important that we actually do that. My group as Enterprise Architecture is really focused on a lot of different dimensions as it relates to this transformation. Everything from how we're evol evolving a cloud platform, how we're driving real-time capabilities within the organization, um, as well as CI, CD, test automation, a lot of those things related to how we transform. But in addition, we also have a real focus on um, leveraging an API platform to actually do that as well. I have George Mitry here from my team. He's a senior enterprise architect, and he's really been leading the transformation on both a business side as well as a, a technology side in terms of, this, of the transformation that we're happening as it relates to APIs and how we're leveraging them. So before we get started, a um, couple of disclaimers. This, in, this presentation is for your information only. Um, I'm not sure how else you would use it, but you've been told. <laughs> Um, and, and also, um, this is effectively Doug and George's opinion of, of uh, how we're moving in this transformation. It is not the official opinion of Discover. So um, with that, um, I want to set a little context and give you a little bit more information on what Discover is. Um, if you're in the U.S., you, you, I'm sure you know it. Um, we have both a direct banking um, line of business that is really focused on the U.S. as an issuing platform. We have Discover Card. Um, is really our core product that we've developed. And we also have deposit products as well as lending products on the direct banking side. From a payments perspective, we are truly global. We have multiple brands that we support um, and really have global alliances around the, the world. So you can use your Discover card in, in I don't know, 145 plus locations. I'm sure that number's grown from when I last heard it. Um, from a brand perspective, what I want you to remember about Discover is, is customer service is, is number one. It's really a core concept and is in our DNA for who we are. Um, and, and that's, um, we've actually won the JD Power Award over the last three years for customer service for credit cards in the US. Um, so that, and you see features like free FICO and freeze it and things like that. We're very focused on how we address customer concerns and customer demands and expectations. Um, and on the payment side, um, I'm sure it's not news that the payments industry is going through a, a transformation in and of itself. It's dynamic. There's so many new wallets coming out every other day. That whole business is actually under kind of a huge amount of transformation going on within the industry. And so that really positions kind of the context for, for how we're actually looking at um, our evolution and, and where we're going. So what we're going to talk about today is really start out with really why we transform and what are the, the fundamental things that really drove us down the path that we chose. Um, and, and then George is going to talk a little bit more in depth on how we've applied APIs and how that uh, impacts our strategy and really uh, and how we're driving that. So I like this quote from Jack Welsh. Um, and you all may have you, you, uh, probably heard of Jack. Um, he was the CEO of GE for, for the better part of two decades. Um, and that quote is actually true when he said it. I don't know exactly when, but if you assume 80s or 90s, it was true then. I would suggest it's true today. The fundamental difference between then and now is you have things like Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go went from nowhere to everywhere in, in a couple of days, literally a couple of days. When you have the pace of change happening so fast and so dynamic in the consumer space, um, it really puts fundamental pressure on how you're delivering software and how you're delivering your product to meet the customer expectations, because that sets a bar. Pokemon Go doesn't compete with Discover, but it sets an expectation in their minds of how their experience is changing. And that's impacting every, every brand and every, every business that, that addresses those consumers directly. If you take that and you really move on to a different trend that's going on in the industry, it's really around security. These are all public breaches, um, publicly disclosed breaches, let's, um, uh, to be clear. Um, you see the size and the scope. And in, in each one of those cases, based on the public information that's available, um, those were all done from the inside out, not from the outside in. So the old adage in, in, security, in security circles, back in the 2000 area, you want a, a hard, crusty exterior and a soft, chewy center is OK. That no longer is OK. That, and that transformed many, a couple years ago. And so now we're looking at how we do fast 
and secure at scale. And that really drove us to think a little bit differently in terms of our approach across the number of dimensions that we, that we use to deliver software. It's really that approach that revolves around the platform-centric approach of creating a platform that the application teams can use to deliver their capabilities. Um, and, it's, it's, and it's very, very core to the, the capability. We, we want to drive a lot of flexibility, but at the same time drive consistency in at the lower levels. Security, if you give a security problem, I need to solve this problem to an application team or to maybe 50 application teams across your enterprise, you'll end up with 50 different solutions. Um, slightly altered, slightly different. So really, we're taking the approach of, of trying to build that in at the lowest levels um, of the platform so that application teams aren't delivering security in their features, they're just delivering business features. Um, a key aspect of understanding developers um, coming from enterprise architecture and working with them frequently over the years is they'll take the path of least resistance. Um, that's kind of how, that's in their DNA. That's where they want to go. And so it has to be easy. If it's not easy, then they're not going to use it. They're going to find their own way that they think is easier. May not be as secure, but you know, that, that's kind of their, so really the bar that we set in terms of how we're approaching this is it has to be easy to use. They have to want to use it. They have to want to use the products we're developing. Otherwise, we need to change our product. It's no different than any other product in the industry. That is the kind of the philosophical direction that we've selected in terms of how we're building our solution moving forward. Um, so at a high level, that's kind of our fundamental approach in terms of where we're going and how we're doing it. I'm going to turn it over to George. He needs to talk a little bit more detail about what that means. So <clears throat> we have a diverse audience today. Um, let me start with uh, bold statements and see if you would agree. Without knowing you, without knowing your industry, I can predict that you are in the software delivery business. You might not realize it. Your boss at work might not realize it. But the fact is that your company is in the software delivery business. Whether you are an automaker, you are a manufacturer of air conditioning, you know, you are a taxi company, you are a bank, you are, regardless of the industry, you have to deal with this issue of software delivery. And you have to be very good at it. Um, and uh, not as a side job, but as a, a, a core technology capability that's part of the daily business operation. So congratulations to all of us. You are in the same industry, software delivery industry. Uh, some companies might realize this more than others, might uh, uh, realize it sooner than others. Uh, for some companies, it might take a little bit of soul searching to uh, recognize that in order to compete, uh, you will have to know how to deal with this technology thing, more or less uh, becoming a technology company. At the end of the day, the journey of digital transformation only begins when the company recognizes that uh, this very true fact that they need to become a technology company. What we want to share with you today about three key experiences that we had in Discover over the past few years in our journey, we're going to talk about how we are enabling a platform-centric approach. Uh, you know what that mean in a moment. Um, how we dealt with security as a built-in, not a bolt-on after the fact uh, aspect of the software delivery. Uh, and also how we treat developers as real people, as real power brokers. So a little bit background in the Discover API platform uh, or API program we are dealing with two distinct use cases. The internally facing enterprise APIs for our own developers, and we are also dealing with externally facing APIs, B2B connectivity for partners developers. Um, if you have been around for a, for a little bit, you probably know, uh, you have heard the SOA program uh, for the internal APIs, uh, uh, service-oriented architecture. So our internal 
API program is uh, more or less about evolving this SOA program, modernizing, uh, addressing the uh, heavy lifting and existing gaps within uh, the SOA program and evolve it to a more self-service, lightweight type of API program. So shifting from an app-centric uh, to a more platform-centric approach, so it's a programmable interface. Uh, every uh, API is born reusable, as opposed to some SOAP services reusable, some not. Um, Self-service, as opposed to a heavyweight governance, you know, uh, having this type of <clears throat> uh, managed user experience or developer experience uh, without the tight coupling between a provider of a service and a consumer of a service together and have to uh, uh, hold hands in a very heavyweight type of approach. So that's all about you know, modernizing and making it more lightweight on the internal front, our own developer experience in Discover. The other side, uh, the externally facing uh, program, it's more about the customer experience or the customer journey. So we want to be wherever our customers are. And <clears throat> whether that a checkout process or uh, you're adding your credit card to your digital wallet, uh, we're positioning the Discover API platform to be the platform of choice during that customer journey. So for example, if you are today uh, on Amazon, uh, checking out on Amazon.com, uh, you could leverage the uh, Discover API platform to pay with cashback bonus. Uh, so Discover has taken that best-in-class cashback bonus program and made it as part of the ecosystem platform of Discover to uh, enable that uh, digital experience of a checkout at any website. Um, if you are adding your credit card to your digital wallet, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Android Pay, whatever you, a digital wallet, uh, you're leveraging the uh, Discover platform uh, to uh, 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 power that digital wallet. So we are not providing the digital wallet, but providing the platform that the digital wallet operates on. We are not providing the checkout experience, but we are uh, th providing the platform that powers that checkout experience. So those are our areas of focus as a starter. And I would be curious on what's your areas of focus. With a show of hands, who of you is dealing with externally facing APIs today? And who's dealing with the internal enterprise APIs? Yeah, so both, Bo okay. So it's a good show of hands. So we're, we are asking the question of what's our areas of focus? And we're asking another interesting question. What's our platform vendor area of focus? We, we asked that question when we started the journey a few years ago. And we're continuing to getting assurance that our area of focus is also the area of focus for our vendor, platform vendor. So here's a list of some other type of uh, areas of focus. For example, uh, the long tail developers. Uh, some vendors are uh, uh, focusing on that. Uh, today, we do have a gated community. Call it the gated. It's by invitation only for our privileged partners. Uh, another possible area of focus would be uh, the billing uh, of API, uh, like a, a baked in feature uh, to process billing. Uh, and, and per click kind of module. Uh, life cycle management of API, uh, analytics and data science. Some uh, vendors are catering toward the device manufacturer, the IoT uh, uh, industry, uh, mobile security, uh, productivity tools, you know, and all vendors almost, they have to deal now with this uh, PaaS and cloud native type of uh, uh, deployment, and that's becoming our areas of area of focus too. So, we come to a realization early on in our experience that we cannot do it alone. Um, we need strategic alliances to be able to deliver fast and confidently 
uh, into this API digital transformation. Uh, the fact that we are presenting here today, it's, it will speak to itself that we are uh, in very good alignment uh, in the journey with the CA platform. Uh, CA had made available uh, many of the uh, channels, support channels on multiple levels to be able to influence the product uh, uh, development. And actually, many of the features that you, you see in the API portal are direct results of our conversation with the product team, the CA API product team. So it's a good alignment story there, and we are continuing to get the assurance that uh, our strategies are aligned and the areas of focus are in a continuous alignment uh, with the product team. For Discover, the API management platform has two major components. We have the gateway and the portal. Um, and we treat those two major components not from technology perspective, but beyond, we look beyond that technology of a portal or a technology of an API gateway. So for example, uh, more than an API uh, portal, whether you are uh, in marketing, in sales, you are a developer, you are a security uh, professional, you are uh, a product owner, the portal, will the portal will play a certain role for you. So for, for us, the portal is really um, a, a marketing capability, capability. it's an engagement capability, it's a security capability, it's a, a, a document repository capability, uh, reporting capability, and also uh, a, a community building capability. So you would think about, if, pick your favorites. If you are, for example, you pick the uh, central documentation and in interactive test drives, uh, developers would love one centralized place to learn about the API and uh, no more, you know, uh, of those uh, 300 pages PDF that nobody knows what's the latest version of it, you know. Um, the, if you are a product owner, you would love to have those metrics, some insights into the, uh, the uh, usage pattern, the latency, all this kind of uh, uh, insightful uh, metrics. Uh, uh, so all type of engagements and security and all type of aspect within the portal, uh, and we look beyond just the technology. Same for the gateway. The, having the API gateway uh, has allowed us to uh, quickly and confidently implement standard-based connectivity with all our partners from B2B uh, connectivity. Now it's the one standard to connect with partners. We used to take month and month of discussions with the security and multiple teams just to connect with one partner. Now it's very predictable and very short period of time we could set up uh, uh, a standard-based connectivity with partners. Professional-grade security, you know, the Gateway has also helped us to, in some operational aspect, operational strategy for, for high availability, for example, for if you're familiar with the blue-green uh, 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 deployment strategy, the Gateway plays a, a crucial role in this type of strategy, operational strategy. So we look at the Gateway as one key uh, component in the end-to-end, -end, starting from the mobile SDK all the way to the CI-CD pipeline, the gateway will be uh, doing a lot of automation and a lot of other uh, roles within that ecosystem of uh, one platform, starting from writing codes into deploying it to production and operating in a highly available manner. We, the, the gateway doesn't only do that, but it do it at scale. And that's usually where things uh, start to fall apart when you start to scale out uh, uh, this uh, uh, API routing or, or those types of, of features. So as a takeaway, the uh, platform choice, uh, you ensure that you're aligned with uh, the, the strategy of the platform vendor, uh, treat gateway and portal as more than just the technology. And there's a lot of best practices around, you know, how to deal with APIs as, a, as they're always born reusable and all the stuff we've talked about. One more thing we want to share with you today is um, how we dealt with security from day one as a built-in aspect to the software delivery. 
not as an afterthought uh, or, or a bolt on uh, for the delivery team. Security is not an option for many companies. As a company, the customer has trusted you with their information, their data. So uh, maybe personal information, financial information, um, having uh, the idea to expose the sensitive information online is not crazy. It's essential to serve your customer. So security becomes an imperative to do it and do it well and do it better than the competition. You don't want to be the weakest link out there as an easy target. Uh, there is a, a story uh, illustrating this concept of security. Um, two friends went out camping. Uh, they were in their tent and then they woke up in the morning getting out, uh, to waking up to a bear coming their way. Um, one friend tell the other, how are we going to outrun this bear? The other friend tell them, I don't need to outrun the bear, I only need to outrun you. So as bad as it is from friendship perspective, uh, it illustrates the that concept of uh, security. Any security professional will tell you that there's no such thing as 100% secure. 100% uh, secure means it's 100% inaccessible or 100% isolated. But what uh, prof security professional will tell you that it's uh, uh, security is the science of making uh, making it extremely or incre increasingly expensive to compromise the system. So with with this concept, I remember a cartoon also that uh, a security professional was talking, saying that um, our system is so secure, even our user cannot log in. So it speaks to the fact of this issue of security and usability. So you actually, the problem with security is that the more security you have, uh, it goes against usability. And you dial up, you probably hit this somewhere in your career, that you hit this dilemma of uh, uh, security dilemma of how I can uh, provide this feature securely or you know why when you dial up security usability suffers if you dial up uh, the usability you make the security guy nervous uh, so uh, what the API platform does and try to address is to enable both security and usability easy to build in our experience, uh, easy to build secure APIs and also making it easy to access the lockdown APIs. It does that by standardizing the API, uh, to standardize the security of the APIs. Uh, so what we have in Discover is a common solution pattern and a set of tools that go along with that. So we took the security out of the hands of average developer and making it part of the platform. So normalizing security, so you don't want to have every project and every team trying to figure out uh, security design on their own. First is, is not, it's overwhelming to the security team and also the outcomes are not be as good as you intended to be. Uh, here's a list of do's and don'ts in, on the security front. If you have a, an API platform, you most likely have a lot of help to fall on the uh, left-hand side column of the do's. An API platform will, will really help you implement standard-based security, uh, built-in common design. Uh, you could automate it a lot with that type of uh, policies. If you don't have an API management platform, you run the risk of having in, uh, in the right-hand side column with custom security, uh, having your average development team uh, uh, picking the security design uh, and afterthought design too. Um, one other thing that we have uh, benefited from having a portal, an API portal as part of the API management platform is the zero trust, one aspect of the zero trust uh, principle. 
uh, having the opt-in in the portal, it helped a lot that's, by default, all our API are locked down. There's uh, initially, treat all requesters, uh, we don't trust anybody. The API is born secure, built-in security, locked down, and then uh, you would have to have some type of registration or some type of boarding process, uh, whatever uh, self-service or whatever accepted in your organization uh, to make it really accessible to uh, the, intended, the intended consumer. One last thing we wanna uh, share with you today is the um, treating the developers as real power brokers. And I think the, the uh, developer word here in a broader sense is the development team, or maybe even broader sense is the technology team. Um, as we mentioned before, the digital transformation journey only begins when the company recognizes that uh, they have to become a technology company. When they come to grasp with this, uh, it starts to treat and behave in a, in a, in a different way. Uh, to continue on that theme, once the business recognizes that they are a technology company, now they treat the technology team in a different way. So it's no longer uh, that type of you know, disconnect between business and technology. Um, if we say that the game has changed, and it requires a digital transformation. We can, if we say that whoever has the best APIs wins in that game, whoever has the best APIs wins. We measure that API quality or best API by the types of API that's been provided and also the developer experience that attached to that API. The types of APIs is uh, a business play, the developer experience is a technology play. Having both together, working together, you get a, a value, a very valuable API. Um, it's interesting that when we start working with the business on this uh, uh, model of uh, putting APIs out there, um, and they have to own a portal, and they deal with a new customer they never dealt with before, the developer. So the business is used to different type of customers, but not a developer. So we found them uh, uh, having difficulties understanding the developer mindset. So we established a strong relationship to help them and assist in understanding that developer mindset uh, and trying to uh, get to deliver with blended and mixed type of skills uh, to that digital team that need to deliver to the developer and the business. The business to technology relationship is interesting. Right? It always has been, always going to be. Uh, what the API really does is that try to bridge that gap of communication and that gap of silos between business and technology. So the CIO, the technology team, will manage the digital assets and the capability, digital capabilities, while the marketing and the business uh, team will manage the digital platform and the digital portfolio of products. So uh, it's no longer business telling IT what to do, it's more of a uh, elevated role of technology working on the same table as the business working together with this type uh, of collaboration and type of uh, mechanism uh, to work together. You can tell a lot about the future performance of a company when you look at how business and technology uh, work together or communicate together in this manner. And you could apply this uh, across the board. So that, that, that's it for us today. Uh, thanks for your time. I, uh, whatever you're working on, whatever you're building, I hope you have enjoyed and uh, you're building something good for the world. Thank you. We'll be available here on the side uh, if you have any more questions or you want to connect. Thank you.